Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Dr. Amir Mohammed, a neuroendocrine tumor specialist at UH Seidman Cancer Center. Today we'll discuss about imaging and biopsy. What type of imaging the neuroendocrine tumor patients need to have and how we get the biopsy and how it's important to get specific information from the pathology report. Starting with the imaging, it's very important to get the right imaging so we can have the right diagnosis exactly for your neuroendocrine tumors. There are two types of imaging in general. This is anatomical imaging and functional imaging. Start with anatomical imaging like CT scan or MRI. These images can tell us where is the tumors are located and what is the size of the tumors. It's very important to get that in the beginning so we know exactly where is your primary tumor is and we can measure the type of tumors. So once we start treatment, we can really measure is your tumors responding to the type of treatment we're giving to you or not. The other type of imaging is functional imaging. And functional imaging like specific PET scan, like the PET Gallium 68, or now we have the Copper 64, which basically using a specific radio labeled material so we can detect specific function on these tumors, what we call the somatostatin receptors on the surface of the neuroendocrine tumors. The test will help us to know if you have these receptors or not, because according to these receptors, we have a specific type of treatments that we can give to our patients. I usually describe that to my patients as the lock and the key. If you have the receptors, this is the lock. And if you have them, we have a key to diagnose you, what we call the functional imaging, the PET scan, but also we have different keys to specifically lock the cell from growing. We're going to discuss that in the next videos like somatostatin analogs or the peptide radionuclei therapy. If these tumors are found in the CT scan or MRI, and we also know if they are well differentiated or not, or we're guessing that from the PET scan, the second step after that is to have a tissue sample or to have appropriate types of tissue through the biopsy so we can confirm what type of cells the patients have. There are main three important pieces of information that you need to look at when you look at your pathology report. The starting with is this is really neuroendocrine tumors or not. So when we take the biopsy, the pathology will stain these cells with the specific stains. They are specific for neuroendocrine tumors. And that's including acromogranin, synoptophysin, sometimes CD56. These are all specific stains for neuroendocrine tumors. The second step after that is to know what is the differentiation and what is the grade. And very simply, differentiation is how is these cells looking under the microscope when you compare them with the normal cell where they are coming from. If there are a lot of similarity with some morphological changes, but you can see the cells in specific group, we call it well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors, or what we call NETS, N-E-T-S, neuroendocrine tumors. If they are looking completely different from where they are coming from, very aggressive looking, we call that poorly differentiated or NEC, neuroendocrine carcinoma. So if you want to summarize everything again, we would like to have a specific stains to confirm this is our neuroendocrines. The second step, what is the differentiations? It is well differentiated net or it is poorly differentiated neck. And the whole types of these neuroendocrine tumors have the general name neuroendocrine neoplasms. The third most important information is the grade. And a grade means how fast are these cells multiplying. We have a grade one, two, and three. Grade one is considered the slow growing tumors. Grade two is the moderate growing. And grade three is the very fast aggressive growing. Usually grade one and grade two are well differentiated, but grade three can be either fast growing, well differentiated, or it can be a grade three poorly differentiated. And why it's important to know? Because the treatment of these patients are completely different. The type of imaging we can order sometimes are also completely different. And definitely the outcome also is significantly different from someone have well differentiated grade 3 versus someone have poorly differentiated grade 3 neuroendocrine carcinoma. So at the end of this video, I would like to summarize for you that the next most important steps after we know that you may have a neuroendocrine tumor is to get the right imaging, starting with anatomical imaging, CT scan or MRI if the patient have liver mats, functional scan, including the PET gallium 68 and copper 64 to detect if you have specific receptors or not, if you have well differentiated. 
If you do not have well differentiated, we'll go ahead with a specific PET scan called PET FDG, and the biopsy will guide us through that because the pathological report will have the differentiation and the grade of the tumor. So, according to that, we can get the best imaging and we can start you in the best treatment.